The Ayers McHenry Polling Organization in the middle of 2009 asked Americans this question. Which option for our economy do you prefer? Option one, government policy should promote fairness by narrowing the gap between rich and poor, spreading the wealth, and making sure that economic outcomes are more equal. Or option two, government policy should promote opportunity by fostering job growth, encouraging entrepreneurs, and allowing people to keep more of what they earn. Americans chose the second option, the free enterprise option, against income redistribution, 63% to 31% in the worst recession in 50 years. It's extraordinary how clear our beliefs are on this subject. As a matter of fact, even when we talk about business, people are clear. The Gallup polling organization asked in the summer of 2009, do you believe that the strength of our nation comes from business? Now, you don't know how that's going to go. People were skeptical about business. President Obama basically is criminalizing the notion of profit. We're saying that business is the bad guy. So what are people going to say? Do you think that the strength of our country comes from business? 76% of Americans said yes. Now, here's where it gets complicated, though. The same survey asked whether or not too much power is in the hands of business. To that question, 77% of Americans also said yes. In other words, three quarters of Americans say that the strength of our country comes from business, but three quarters of our country doesn't trust business. How is this possible? I was rolling this around in my head when I was working on my latest book. And I couldn't figure it out. I thought something was wrong with a poll. Sometimes polls get messed up. And so you throw out the data. You don't use those polls because if they're not conducted right, if they have contradictory things like that. So I was deciding what to do, and I was discussing this research at home with my family at dinner, which shows you how much fun it is to have dinner in my house. <laughs> <laughs> and and I, I like to run these things past my wife, who's very street smart about these types of things. I said, I've got this weird result. I, I don't believe the data. The data say that three quarters of Americans say the strength of our country is business, but three quarters say they don't trust business. How is that possible? My wife said, oh, that's simple. That makes perfect sense. And I said, what do you mean? She said, it's just like marriage. And I, thought, and I said, this is not going in a good direction. <laughs> she said, it's like this. Everybody loves the institution of marriage, but nobody trusts husbands. <laughs> and I said, that's a good point. <laughs> the bottom line is this. No matter how you slice it, the data show we're a 70-30 nation. 70% 70 of us, of you, of the whole country, loves free enterprise and loves it for cultural reasons. 30% stand athwart free enterprise and are trying to wreck it. We're a 70-30 country. Now, this is an amazing contrast to our European friends. For example, if you ask Americans, do you believe it is the principal job of government to redistribute income from rich to poor? Only 33% of Americans say yes. You ask that question to the Spaniards, 77% say yes. That's a different civilization that we have. People who say, we're just like the Europeans, not yet we're not. And if there's no more vivid example of the difference between Americans and Europeans than what's going on in the streets in, in the two, on the two continents. Who's protesting in Greece? Who is protesting in the general strike a week ago in Greece? The answer is bureaucrats and union members who throw Molotov cocktails, burn down their own buildings, demanding lavish state pensions, early retirements, and salaries paid by their fellow citizens in the, worst, in the middle of the worst economic recession in decades in their country. They are entitled to the fruits of the labor of others. That's what they protest for in Greece. What do we protest for here? What are the Tea Party and town hall protesters protesting in the United States? In a nutshell, they, you, are protesting against exactly what the Greeks are demanding. You're protesting against bigger government, against more intervention, against redistribution, against the abridgments of the free enterprise system. You're protesting the fact that the government feels that certain people should be declared winners and other people declared losers. That is ethical populism. That is American exceptionalism. This is the best we have to offer. It's an example of the fact that we're still a 70-30 nation if we care to make sure that our system goes forward. These are the real heroes and are going to guide the way, the people who are in the streets today. That's you.
But this begs a big question. We're a 70-30 nation, so how come the 30% is in charge? It's supposed to be a democracy, right? What's going on? There are answers to this question. The 30% coalition against free enterprise is governing our nation for three big reasons. Reason number one, not always the popular explanation for Republicans. The 30% coalition has stood against the 70% majority for a long time and before the November 2008 elections. Recall, in the past presidential administration, we saw 55,000 spending earmarks without one veto because of abusive spending. We saw the largest expansion in entitlement uh, spending in American history in Medicare Part D. We saw an expansion in the size of the Federal Department of Education by 54% in inflation-adjusted dollars over the two Bush administrations. The fact of the matter is, we didn't start down the road to serfdom on November 2008. We simply started running down that road in November 2008. And we have to be realistic about the fact that this is not a culture war of Democrats versus Republicans. This is a culture war of big government versus you. And that's the truth. The second reason that the 30% coalition is in charge today is because they got a big game changer. They got a big game changer in the fall of 2008 called the financial crisis. The financial crisis, which put everybody into a panic, was a perfect opportunity for politicians who created the crisis through bad housing policy, through government-sponsored enterprises, by blowing up a housing bubble and by bursting it through their foolish, dangerous actions, misguided policy, then had the gall to turn around and blame the entire crisis on the free enterprise system. And a sufficient number of Americans believed them. That's the second reason that they're in charge. The third reason is us. We haven't chosen. You know, I hear all the time, we don't have a culture war in this country. There's no conflict between 70-30. We're a nation of compromise. We're a nation that can compromise between free enterprise and the state. Why can't we? We've always compromised. And in point of fact, it's true. There is no regime on earth that's pure capitalism or pure socialism. It's always in the middle. But I tell you this. If we don't make the affirmative ethical decision for free enterprise and do it now, the decision will be made for us, and as I stated earlier, the decision will always break for the statists and redistributionists. The bill of goods that they have sold us effectively in this country is that we don't have to make a decision. One little compromise here, a little bailout there, a little subsidy here, and little by little, we're marching ourselves down the road to serfdom. That's the real problem. So that the ethical stance that you're taking today, making the moral case for free enterprise, remembering it's not about individual issues, it's about the broad system. This is important, because if we don't do it, the 30% stays in charge. Now, I've made the case that we're a 70-30 nation, and it's manifestly true, but I haven't made the case yet that the 30% is completely wrong. I know you feel it in your hearts, and so do I, What's written on your hearts is that it's a depressing gray world. It's a life in the hive where the 30% tells us what to do and where to go and how to work and how to study and, and the list goes on and on. But I haven't actually showed you the data to understand why they're wrong about our country. That's what I'm going to do now. And the answer is basically this. The 30% coalition's view about the way America should be will lead us to be an unhappy, unflourishing country. And that's a matter of evidence, not just philosophy. When you ask somebody in the 30% coalition, which I do frequently, every time I go to a family reunion, <laughs> when I ask people in the 30% coalition, why do you think free enterprise is so bad? And they say, because you got too many winners and too many losers. Because some people make so much more money than other people. There's too much inequality. It's not fair. It's not a fair country. It's not a just country. And to get a fairer, juster country, we need more income redistribution. We can't let the, the people on the high side get so high and the people on the low side get so low. We've got to equal everything out. Redistribution is how we get a happier country. Now, on its face, this is not a crazy argument. Why? You see in the data that people who make more than $75,000 a year, statistically, are twice as likely to say they're very happy people who's people who make less than $25,000 a year. Inequality seems to matter.